Well, America has just gone through the second biggest day of voting outside of November's presidential election, and Donald Trump won almost every contest on Super Tuesday. And while the focus has been on the Republican race, what has President Joe Biden been saying or not saying, because he has once again claimed that he'll get into trouble for answering questions. To get into all of this and more, we're joined by host of the US Report, James Morrow. James, thank you so much for joining us. Great Let's to be get here. Straight into Super Tuesday. Nikki Haley has finally suspended her campaign. So we're officially in for, well, almost officially in for a Biden Trump rematch. Well, look, it looks like that right now. But there's still a long way to go here. You know, both Donald Trump and Joe Biden have issues, shall we say, that could still be hurdles before them, uh, before they get to November. Donald Trump, of course, has all of these different legal challenges, which largely, you know, I think are starting to fall apart because this sort of leftist program of lawfare, of trying to use laws to keep him off the ballot instead of running a good, good candidate against him, um, is really falling apart. We saw that this week with the Supreme Court verdict 9 nil saying Colorado couldn't keep him off the ballot. Joe Biden, on the other hand, has a much bigger problem. You know, everywhere you go, you see these White House people and these surrogates for Biden saying, hey, don't believe what you see out there on the screen. He's really fine. He's doing great. There's no problem. Back in the Oval Office, he's got seven games of chess going all at the same time, and he's beating everybody, you know, but we don't see it. Um, he's got a huge problem because people are really concerned about his age, his ability, his competence, uh, yeah. and they don't want to vote for him if they're going to say, well, he's not going to finish out a term. What are we going to be left with? Kamala Harris. And, you know, for all this talk about the economy, it's not doing that great for ordinary people. The world is a mess. And they look back at Donald Trump and they say, hey, Things weren't that bad. Well, look, Joe Biden is often hiding. Um, are we going to see a debate? We know that Donald Trump has challenged him to one. Is that going to eventuate? There is absolutely zero chance, I can tell you that tonight, zero chance that there's going to be a debate between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Joe Biden's handlers will barely let him go to a press conference without the questions being pre-selected and hand-picked among the press corps and him there with his notes so he knows what he's saying. We saw the last time he was in a really unscripted situation that was hostile. That was that thing a few weeks ago when he had the big press conference um, about the Her oh, Report, which said that he was, unbelievable. Uh, you know, mentally incompetent. And he said, I am mentally incompetent. And then he went <laughs> and he mixed up Gaza and Mexico City. Oh, it was so bad. Or I, Egypt I, and Mexico that was, City. That was right, Egypt yeah. and Mexico City. Look, you mentioned he's always got his note cards with him. The White House press secretary was very defensive uh, when she was asked this question by a reporter about why Joe Biden needs his note cards, especially when he's visiting the southern border. Take a listen. Uh, the president, I noticed, had, had note cards uh, at the border when he was doing his uh, briefing there. He also had note cards uh, last Friday with the uh, Italian prime minister. Why does the president rely so heavily on note cards? You're upset because the president has note cards? Not you're upset, you're asking me a question about the president having note cards? I don't think that's, I don't think, I don't, wait, I'm, I'm not speaking to you right now, James. I'm talking to, I'm talking to your friend over here, Ed. So thank you so much. But thank you so much for interjecting. James, very defensive. But look, I think it's a fair question. Why does the president need his note cards? Well, and you know, it's really incredible too. We've seen for years now when the pool photographers have zoomed in on a lot of those note cards, you know, they're saying, you know, you sit here, you do this. <laughs> the person on your left is this person. The person to your right oh, is can't. that person. So it's really quite, you know, basic, painful stuff here. And it really suggests that he needs so much help. And the reason why they're defensive, yeah. you know, it's not like he's sitting there with a briefing note that has, you know, the top line facts and figures that he can refer to. You know, all politicians, all presidents will have that. These are really scripted, big type things for a guy. They are just praying every time he goes out in front of the press, that doesn't fall apart. Yeah, well, we'll wait and see what happens on Thursday because Joe Biden is set to deliver the State of the Union address. <laughs> what can we expect? Will he fall apart? <laughs> well, no, look, I think, I think they've managed to keep him together for things like that, but it's a high energy, long speech, and so it's a very high risk environment. My prediction is that he will deliver a probably a pretty strong speech. I suspect that he's got, you know, some medical help that allows him to get through this sort of event, but we'll see about that. Um, 
And what he's going to do is he's going to lay out a really, I suspect, big number of attack lines on the Republicans and start to really kick off the Democrat campaign from there, which will be Friday, uh, Friday afternoon, our time, and we'll be doing a big package on it Friday night at 8. How much of the speech do you think he'll devote to foreign policy issue, uh, issues such as Israel and Ukraine or, or other domestic issues such as the border? I think the domestic stuff, especially the economy, is where you're going to see most of the focus. He doesn't want to talk too much about foreign policy because a lot of these things are big sores on his presidency, particularly Israel, Gaza. He wants that over because it's hurting his support with Arab American communities as, as well as the sort of the hard left uh, communities in, in, in America. So he wants that over and done because that's really costing him support and people are going to stay home on him on that. Um, and then, you know, Ukraine, well, that's been very contentious and it's not always entirely popular with Republicans. The southern border is a disaster. He'll claim victory. He'll say that the Republicans have obstructed border deals and so on. But the fact is, you know, in his first 100 days, he rescinded something like 94 executive orders that kept the border in some sort of control. So that open border, that's all on him. Yeah. Well, look, we've heard President uh, Joe Biden say that he wants a, a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war. And this is really his message to Americans, that it's in the hands of Hamas. Take a listen. The hostage deal is in the hands of Hamas right now. Okay. Because there's been an offer, a rational offer. The Israelis have agreed to it. And uh, wait to see what the Hamas does. Do you think you'll see a deal by Ramadan? Well, I, there's got to be a ceasefire because Ramadan, if we get into a circumstance where this continues through Ramadan, Israel and Jerusalem, again, it could be very, very dangerous. James, watching that clip, what's your reaction? I look at it and I, I think, where's the strength, where's the leadership? Yeah, I mean, like I was thinking about this earlier. I was thinking about... Um, you know, previous Middle Eastern crises and the leaders we had. And I was thinking back sort of the Nixon-Kissinger days. And, you know, Nixon was a seriously engaged foreign policy president. And this guy is letting his national security team, which is basically a bunch of Biden, a bunch of Obama retreads, um, manage it for him. It's not looking great. Yes, of course, this is Hamas's fault, but, you know, the, the ceasefire, but Hamas started the whole thing in the first place. So, you know, he's not telling us anything we don't know there. Um, but, you know, as far as that's all concerned, Israel's got to finish the job. Otherwise, Hamas does it again.